And that's right, we're back once again with another exciting episode of Rick's Horror Movie Review Show. Rick's Rated R Horror Movie Review Show, where we review, well, you know by now, horror movies. My favorite kind of horror movie is a movie like The Exorcist, Catholic Church, Demons, Skeletons in Your Closet. A wandering spirit or soul that wants to take over your body because, fuck it, it just wants to. It has no motivation other than to be alive again. It wants what you have. Life. That's my kind of scary movie. You know that by now. Now we're going to talk about a movie today that has some elements that, uh, you know, that I think worth a scary film. Uh, I think there's definitely some possession. But tonight's movie, or today's movie, is Pet Cemetery Bloodlines. Now, this film is based on stories from Stephen King's novel Pet Cemetery, and they've made Pet Cemetery movies. I remember there's a Pet Cemetery movie in the 90s, maybe there's one or two. Uh, I saw one recently, maybe a few years ago, and... Did they need to make another Pet Cemetery movie? Mm, you know, arguable. Uh, I, I think that there could have... Uh, there's definitely material to write or work with, but uh, I don't know what's going on with this film. Anyway, let's get right into this. Remember, this is always a spoiler full review. We're going to talk about the things I liked, and then we're going to talk about the things I didn't like. And then we're going to give this movie a rating, and that's going to be it. And this is going to be a short one. Because it's, the, the film itself is a short one. And as a matter of fact, that's one of the things I really enjoyed. What do you mean? Don't you like longer stories? Is there something wrong with your attention span or something? There's absolutely nothing wrong with my attention span. But if it's not striking my fancy and it just feels like it's dragging on and you're just putting scenes for the sake of extending a film, then we're going to have a fucking problem. So make a good movie. And if it happens to be two, three hours long, well, you know, then it's an epic film. But if it... If it doesn't need to be that long, then don't make it that long. All right, well, I, I guess I'll consider that the next time I write a film. Well, thank you. Anyway, things I liked. Uh, this movie was short, which is good because, uh, you know, there wasn't more meat on the... <laughs> there wasn't much meat on those bones. Uh, I've never read the novel. I'm going to be very honest with you. Forgive me. Uh, forgive me for I have... Forg forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. That's all right, Sonny, but I want you to do three Hail Marys and then a uh, uh, quarterback option. And then maybe uh, uh, fake a running play and then, uh, you know, just do a quarterback draw. Of course, Father, of course. Anyway, the movie's short. Uh, an hour and about 27. By the way, you can find this movie on Paramount+. Plus. I'm going to get into the habit of telling you where you can find it if it's not in theaters. Paramount+. Plus. Uh, movie short, one hour and 27 minutes, and that's good, uh, considering there wasn't much to, to tell. And as a matter of fact, uh, the next thing I liked about this movie was, uh, I think the basis of the story was uh, interesting. Uh, and uh, I liked it, I just didn't really like the execution, I felt I could have done a better job at it. Uh, not much to say about cinematography, or shooting locations, or scenes specifically, but pretty standard uh, I would say slasher, slash, slasher, slash, slasher, slasher, slash, slasher, slash horror movie. Um, nothing new is added. Uh, some actually some some things that uh, um, some elements of slasher movies, some elements of you know suspense and thriller, and you know you it, it, I feel like it has its high points, but eh, you know. So, anyway, I like the basis of the story, and we'll get into what that basis is shortly. Things I didn't like, oh, well, talking about the story. Let's talk about the story. Not much of an explanation of the story. Well, that's because you're supposed to have read the novel before you watch this film, Rick. Don't you know how to read? Matter of fact, I do know how to read. The problem is, it's like, I don't fucking feel like reading the novel. I just want to watch a fucking scary movie. Without having to read 60 million years worth of lore. Is that too much to ask for? Give me a little setup. Explain to me in two or three lines. It doesn't have to be some fucking epic 30 minute explanation. We're a smart audience. We'll get it. Just tell us, hey, this fucking cemetery, it's haunted. This shit happened. These demons came from hell. 
30,000 years ago, they just started fucking shit up because, you know what, they're fucking demons and that's kind of what they do. But they didn't do much of that. Not much of an explanation for the story. What is the motivation of the characters? What's going on here? Why are they just doing the things that, that they're doing? Why? So the, the motivation to me was uh, lacking. They're just kind of sort of existing in this bubble of, uh, you know, existence without really caring much about what they're doing. It's just so weird. But anyway, motivation for the characters really, really sucked. And I mentioned earlier, slashers. They have some cheesy, cheesy, cheesy slasher film shots, which I really don't like, honestly. I, I, I just think these things are so overdone and they're just so fucking annoying. And they're like, they represent like the stupidity of fucking characters. Like, I mean, how many times do you need to see a girl being chased in a movie scene or a movie scene or a movie film or a movie film? It's just so overdone. It's, it's annoying. Like, get over that. You know, do something else. We don't need to see or we don't need to see, you know, the fucking killer like mysteriously show up somewhere and then start chasing somebody for fucking four minutes where this person has nowhere to go, but magically escapes for a little bit, and then gets captured or gets cornered, and then has nowhere to go when there's, like, several different options available. Like, oh, there's a fucking vehicle. You know, really, there's no keys around that. That's your fucking car. Okay, I get it. Sometimes we can't find the keys, but in a moment like that, I'm pretty certain that those keys should be in your pocket or nearby somewhere. Or, you know what, just fucking run. Run and start yelling like crazy. Like, you've never, you know done in your life but don't go to some secluded fucking area where you're gonna be cornered in that's just fucking dumb who's writing this shit is it johnson again is this is this you're doing johnson just don't phone case don't fucking say anything john just stay over there i don't want to hear you but anyway i really fucking hate that um and there's more than one <laughs> you have two scenes where they do this really that's how, that's how, you know, original this film's going to be. Two, two film scenes where slashers are, are chasing two different women. Come on. Get creative. Um, David Duchovny's in this movie. If you don't know who David Duchovny is, he's, uh, he is famously known for his character as Fox Mulder in the series. The X-Files, which deals with the occult and horror stories and sci-fi and fucking aliens and the truth is out there he's also in like californication which i never saw but uh, anyway he's just so uh, on and maybe he's not like the biggest star but clearly he's a star you know compared to everybody else on the cast he's the biggest star in the cast i don't know any of those other actors so i would have used him as if he was the biggest star you know and he's just so unceremoniously used and unceremoniously killed in this movie yeah, i'm gonna fucking spoil it for you remember spoiler Full review. And then, just pointless death. Don't drive the story forward. They, they're just killing characters for the sake of killing characters. I mean, I get there's a horror movie, but what's the motivation? What's the motivation behind the death? I'm sitting there in the audience or, in, you know, watching this in my, in my home. I'm like, why am I watching this? What's going on here? I want to watch a good, scary movie that has motivation and good plot elements and a well-written story. And I feel satisfied after I watch it. I didn't feel satisfied after watching this junker. Yeah, that's, that's what this place is. This piece is. It's a junker. Anyway, let's get into the story. And you know what? This is going to be a really short review because it's not much meat on these bones. So the story goes this way. Um, movie begins with the company bearing something out somewhere. And if you're familiar with the novels, and if you're not familiar with the fucking novels, I'm just going to set this up real quick. As I understand it, of course. The company's burying his child, who just came back from the Vietnam War, as it turns out. And this place, this movie takes place in 16, back in 69. Hey, you know, man, I haven't had a cigarette since 1969. And this movie takes place in 1969, and the company's uh, kid is uh, Judd? No, Timmy. Timmy. Timmy comes back from the war all messed up because that's what those wars do to you, unfortunately. Comes back with psychological issues, trauma. And um, obviously none of that stuff was, uh, nobody cares about that then, or nobody cared about that then, and nobody cares about that now. So the soldier comes back, and, you know, he's just having a real hard time adjusting to society from the horrors, the real-life real horrors 
of war that he's just seen and experienced firsthand. The horrors, perhaps, and atrocities that he himself uh, committed. And uh, yeah, we're not going to get into that because not much other than him coming back from the war. But anyway, we don't know that he came back to war until later in the story, but we see the company bearing something, which turns out to be his son, Timmy, in this field. But of course, we know now that this field is probably the haunted place in the pet cemetery where you're not supposed to go. And if you don't fucking know, you bury something there and it gets reanimated. Why? Well, I thought I was going to find out because the thing's called bloodlines, right? So anyway, he gets buried there and he, he gets reanimated and he comes back to life. And now Timmy is this demon thing or possessed. But the bloodlines part. There's a flashback scene to, you know, sometime in the 1600s when, uh, you know, colonials from, from Britain came over to take over the land, forcibly take over the land. And uh, they're looking for, and the town is named after this gentleman, and I don't fucking remember, it starts with a nail, Lawson, Leonor, uh, you find out. But anyway, they're looking for this gentleman whose name, we're going to go with Lawson, his name is, uh, his name is Lawson, and um, they're looking for him, and they can't find him, but they come upon this, uh, this Native American uh, gentleman who is performing some sort of ritual, wearing this, this mask to, to ward off evil spirit. And this is either happening... He's either in the pet cemetery or adjacent to the pet cemetery. And this Lawson guy, uh, you know, something happened to him and he was buried in the unholy land, right? And at this point of the story, you think, and this is the flashback, by the way. They, this is not the way they tell the story. They tell other elements before they tell the story, but they should have told it this way. The story should have told, should have been told in this fashion. And so, you know, he has the, uh, so the colonists, colonials, the, the, uh, the, uh, the folks from Europe, <laughs> uh, the people are colonizing in America in the 1600s. Uh, uh, where was I? Oh, right. They're looking for Lawson, and they come upon this gentleman who's praying, a Native American suit, and uh, wearing a mask, and he's banging a drum. And he's, saying, and he's mummering, and he's saying things in his native tongue. And, uh, you know, obviously the colonials are like, ask this guy, ask this guy where Lawson is, priest. And the priest, I guess, asks him because the priest uh, speaks uh, the native language. And uh, that's when he tells him, you know, hey, uh, something happened to this dude. Fucker's buried over there. Uh, but, you know, he, your people fucked up. You shouldn't have gone in there. We fucking told you. Uh, you don't fucking listen. And now all your shit's going to get fucked up. So the colonials are like, fuck it. We're going to go find Lawson. And uh, before they leave, the Native American dude is like, oh, shoot him in the eye. It's the only way of fucking killing these things. And all the colonials are like, what? What do you mean shoot him in the eye? What does that mean? How do you know we have weapons? Oh, you mean our guns, right? Right, right. These are the guns that we used to forcibly push you away from your lands. We're really sorry about that, but we need somewhere to stay. All right? And so the colonials go and uh, go find their, their man, Lawson. Lawson! Bloody hell, where are you? And they find him. Uh, they find him chomping on another guy that just mysteriously wandered off looking for him as well. And um, he's clearly possessed by something, and then he attacks them, and the scene cuts away. You assume that somehow somebody in this party of, uh, you know, settlers, or colonials, finally was able to kill Lawson, and, you know, the, the thing subsided. Unfortunately, it never actually goes away. So the story of this movie is Bloodline. So there's founding families. And all these founding families live in this town of Lawson, which is not Lawson, but I forgot the name. It starts with an L. And they all live there, and they all know the curse, and they all know the pet cemetery thing, and then, and then weird shit starts happening with Timmy. Why? Because he was buried in this fucking dirt. Right? The same dirt that Lawson was buried, buried in. And now Timmy is just fucking killing for the sake of killing. Why? Because he was buried in this dirt that he shouldn't have been buried. His dad buried them there because, you know, came back. This dude came back, unfortunately. And he hung himself, and the dad was really sad about it, as you can understand. And he buried him in, in, in the bad in the, black, in the bad lands. Uh, and this is the company. And then he comes back to life, and he's a fucking demon. And that's it. And there's no explanation as to why or where this demon comes from. He's just a fucking demon. And you think at some point of the story, we're going you know, to find out more about these bloodlines. And the only thing we're told is that the folks who created this town uh, are responsible for maintaining the demon, containing the demon. And that's kind of it. That's Bloodlines. And the movie focuses on Timmy just unceremoniously and for no reason or no motivation starts killing people. So he's just 
he's targeting Judd, his friend, his childhood friend. So he had three childhood friends. You have Timmy, Judd, and Manny. And he starts targeting Judd. And he starts targeting Manny. And he wants to target Norma, who happens to be uh, Judd's uh, girlfriend. And he targets Donna, who's Manny's sister, for no fucking reason. No fucking reason at all. And he's successfully, he's, you know, and I don't know how much I want to get into this fucking story because it's so, just so pathetically lame. Um, Judd goes after Donna, who is this, uh, you know, she's a Native American, so is Manny. And, you know, they have dreams of living this town. And so does so Judd and Norma. They have dreams of joining the, the, the Peace Corps. And Judd, by the way, escaped the war because uh, his dad paid off uh, the old Donald Trump. He had bone spurts. So Judd had bone spurts. Uh, his dad paid, paid off the doctor. And so Judd never had to go to Vietnam War. They don't really explain why Manny didn't have to go. I'm assuming maybe it's a, I don't know about the draft in 69. Um, he's definitely of age. So actually, he did look face his name in the list at the beginning of the movie in this hockey scene, this hockey rink scene where Judd and his dad are like saying their final goodbyes. Dad, I'm going to miss you when I join the Peace Corps. Are you going to miss me, Dad? Of course. Of course I'm going to miss you, Judd. You're my boy. I love you. Thanks, Dad. You're so supportive. And, uh, yeah, and then they find out that neither of them get drafted. And then Judd and Norma are off on their way, and, you know, some weird shit happens where they hit a fucking bird. And then Judd's dog jumps at Norma and bites her in the fucking... Oh, actually, no. They walk the dog back to Judd's house, and that's when they figure out that Judd's dog weird, but not... They don't really know why yet. And that's when Norma gets attacked by John's dog. Yeah, this is the story, by the way. This is the fucking story. Norma gets attacked by John's dog. Jug, the dog isn't possessed or anything or, or anything like that. Uh, and uh, for some reason, it just decides to attack Norma. And Norma's now in the hospital. And Norma spends the majority of the film in the hospital. That's where Norma belongs. Oh my God, this hospital bed is so comfy. I really like it here. And the nurses are so awesome. Thanks, you guys. I feel so much better with this ma with this wrap around my arm because that dog had like really sharp teeth and he's like tearing my flesh. Oh my god, it hurts so much. But you know, I've got that good medication in my system now and this awesome bandage. I really want to thank you guys. I'm a little emotional, but I feel real good. So she's just in a hospital for the duration of the movie until like the last few scenes, the last few minutes, I should say, last fifteen minutes. Anyway. She's now off the, you know, off the list of characters to follow. Now we have Donna, who's in, you know, she's an aspiring artist, real good artist, you know, and um, Judd, <laughs> for no reason, uh, is after Donna now. And the first interaction you see of them is Donna has, like, this party that she's throwing for her and her artist friend, and Manny's there, and uh, all of a sudden Judd shows up, Judd shows up, Judd, Judd, Judd. Judd shows up and, uh, you know, starts acting all weird. And Donna's like, what the fuck, Judd? Why are you acting so weird? And, of course, Judd's, like, being a weird demon-possessed character. I don't fucking know. Anyway, scenes later, um, Judd attacks Donna. Goes back to Donna's house. And fucking kills her. Why? No fucking reason. That's just the film. This, this, is, this is the film, folks. Judd goes and attacks Donna. No, there must be something you're not telling us. I'm certain my brain is uh, processing as much as the story as it possibly can at this moment, but I don't recall any uh, important interaction that tells us why Judd kills Donna. Even in the act of killing Donna, Donna's like, well, you don't remember I fucking made you sandwiches the way that, you know, you liked them? I cut the fucking crust off the bread for you, motherfucker. Now you're going to unceremoniously kill me for no fucking reason? And just like, oh, uh -huh. and yeah, he just fucking kills Donna. And of course, now, again, don't know why, but Judd goes and buries Donna in the Badlands. The Badlands. Donna was buried in the Badlands, where she too was reanimated. And so now, Donna becomes reanimated. And now, without motivation, no fucking reason, now Donna is off to kill people as well. And so Donna now goes to the, uh, the hospital where Norma is just chilling. You know, Norma's just like, oh my god, I'm so good here. 
and Donna shows up and it's like, oh my God, Donna, you're my girl. I can't believe you shut up and you brought flowers. Oh my God, you're so awesome. But Donna's already reanimated. So she's not in, she's not there to see Donna for, uh, you know, like uh, any other reason than to kill her. Why? No fucking reason. Just because. And this is where we start seeing those stupid slasher scenes. And so Norma is being chased through the hospital by Donna. Why? Because Donna wants to kill Norma. Why does Donna want to kill Norma? No fucking reason. Just because that's just the way this movie was written. Donna's possessed. She was reanimated. Judd Bayer turned into Badlands. Now Donna is a demon. Or has a demon. Or is possessed. Or has some spooky shit in her. But that's the story. Thankfully, somehow, Norma escapes. We don't see how, but she fucking escapes. And now we go back to Judd. And I forgot to mention, Pam is in this movie, and there's a couple of other characters who are you know, part of the fanning group, the founders. And they all know. And there's a phone call. All right, guys. Well, you know, the old demon is back. What are we going to do about it? Well, well we got to do something about it. You know, them demons, they, they don't just, you know, go back to hell under, under their own will. Well, we're going to have to, we're going to have to do something. We got to... Sh- well, that's right. We got to shoot him in the eyes, don't we? Oh, yeah. That's right. We got <laughs> to shoot him in the eye. That's right. We got to find ourselves some demons and shoot him in the eye. That's what we're going to do. And Pam Cruz with this group, and she's like, yeah, well, fuck it. Let's find some fucking demons and shoot these fuckers in the eye. Otherwise, we're all going to start to die. And they put a search party together. And, you know, they go find the company who obviously is Judd's dad, and they... And they all get together, and apparently Judd's in his house, in his farmhouse, right? So now it's Timmy, Manny, Judd's dad, Pam Greer's character, who's the male woman, the chef, who's part of the founders, and, uh, and the company. And they're all, and, and now, you know, we're in the end game already, by the way. And so now they're in the, they're on the farm. They're in the Judd and uh, David Company's farm. And they start looking for Judd. And three characters, Manny, Judd. Judd's dad, they're on the stairs, and the company, they're in the house, and they're looking for Judd. Where is Judd? Oh my god, I kind of heard something upstairs. Maybe he's upstairs. And they split up. And, uh, you know, long, long story short, Judd gets away. And they go into this fucking magical cellar because the house is on fire. Because for some reason, they don't explain, you need to burn down your house. We gotta burn down the whole damn thing. Ah. Uh, that's the only way we can contain this thing. Well, I thought the only way we can contain this thing by shooting it in the fucking eye. Well, well, I mean, that's how you stop the damn thing. But if you won't contain it, you got to burn the whole damn thing to the ground. And we got a lot of gasoline here and I brought matches. So we, we got to burn this some bitch. Come on now, don't. Don't look at me like that. I know you want to shoot some. I know you want to shoot some demon in the eye, but we got to burn this place down. All right. So they start to burn the house down. And those characters I mentioned earlier, Manny, Judd, Judd's dad, uh, and David, yeah, Judd's dad, and Judd's dad, who's, <laughs> and David the company, um, are in the house. And unfortunately, uh, Judd's dad gets stabbed with a shotgun. Yes, that's right. Judd's dad gets stabbed in a shotgun, and they find Donna. Donna somehow's in the house as well. And Norma's like, I mean, and Man is like, well, that's my sister. You can't kill her. But she starts like slashing at him with a scalpel. Same one that she attacked uh, Norma in the hospital with. And unfortunately, you know, long story short, uh, Judd's dad came in and blasted her with a shotgun. She didn't quite die. So she grabbed that same shotgun and stabbed him through, uh, like the back, right through the abdomen. Now he's dead. Now uh, Manny grabs the gun and, uh, and then shoots her. Was it Manny? Somebody shot her right through the eye. So she's dead. She's good. Only way, only way we can kill these things is uh, shooting them in the eye. Don't forget that. So she gets shot in the eye. So now Don is gone. Dead. Unceremoniously. Second death. No reason. Just because she lives in this fucking town. And I guess that's the point. Maybe. She's just in a shitty town with shitty people that do shitty things that was founded by shitty people to begin with who fuck shit over. And now everybody's just fucked. 400 years later. So Don is dead. So now the, the whole damn thing is coming down because of the fire. We got to get out of here. So now they get into, you know, an escape route. There's like a hatch, a trap door uh, at the bottom of the house, a cellar. Is that what it is? 
but there's this mysterious tunnel. And somehow, uh, Donna, I think she escaped the hospital, or she's abducted by Judd, and she's uh, now in these tunnels. How do you know? Because they found like her necklace with a like, Jesus cross on it. Oh, that's Jad. Oh my God, my dad just died. This is Judd. But Donna's still alive. I mean, Norma. Norma, my girl, she's still alive. I can. This is her necklace. I can feel her. So I guess Judd grabbed her from the hospital, and now he's like putting her in this hole on the ground in this cave. So now they all start jumping into this cave looking for Donna, looking for Norma, sorry. And Norma's like slowly but surely drowning in mud. That's right. She's tied up, and she's drowning in mud. Mud keeps coming down. <laughs> Oh my god, it's so calm, it's not here. And she's drowning in mud. And so now we're left with Manny, Judd, and Timmy's dad, David the company. And they split, of course. They all split up in the tunnels. And there's the first encounter of Judd with the company. I'm sorry, <laughs> Timmy and the company. So they're the father and son. And maybe you think that's where the end, this thing's going to end, but uh, the company shoots and doesn't hit him in the eye. And then unceremoniously killed, off screen, we don't know what happened. Next scene, the company's dead. And his guts are all spilled out all over the place because Judd likes guts. And we keep going, and we exit the tunnels, and we find up we wind up in the swamp area. And by the way, Donna's still <laughs> Norma is still drowning in mud. And now it's Manny, and now it's Judd, and they're after Timmy. And at this point, it's like one of the first instances we see Timmy like walking like super fast. He's like super captain. So he's got super soldier speed, super soldier Sam. That's a reference to Captain America. And he's super fast and he's super strong, but that's what the demon does. Even though his like body's falling apart, he still has somehow super magical speed and super magical strength. And they're in the swamp and Judd traps Manny. He puts him under like uh, a mine, a trap. So if he gets up, he can blow up. Don't try to get up, dude. You're just going to blow yourself up. Man, he's like, back. And he's stuck. So now it's up to Judd, the hero. The hero's journey. It's up to Judd. Judd will come into... Don't you worry, Manny. I'm Judd. And I'm going to save you. And uh, sure enough, there's a small scuffle between Judd and Timmy. And there's this cool scene. I'll give it I'll give it that. There's this cool scene where they're in the swamp and Judd's like holding his breath. Is he even holding his breath since he's dead? Can, does he need to hold his breath? If he's reanimated, maybe he still needs to breathe, right? I mean, somehow, yeah. I mean, I, I'm going to get into the, uh, the uh, physical or biomechanical stuff of this movie. But anyway, he's holding his breath under all water and Timmy is looking for him. And obviously Timmy has his gun and he's fired a few shots and he misses. And then there's a scuffle and he drops the gun and Judd grabs Timmy. But Manny has a flare and Manny's like aiming, just doing his best, right? And now, oh, now the hero's Manny. And Manny's taking slow aim and he's doing the best he can to put one not between the eyes, but right in the eye. You got to shoot these bad boys in the eye if you want to get them. But first, we got to set the building on fire. Manny remembered that. And so Manny grabs his flare gun and just shoots. And boom. Shoots Judd in the eye. And that's it. Judd's dead on. Did you forget about Norma? Oh, oh my God. Norma, my girlfriend, she's somewhere here. Where is she? She just saves herself. Yeah, she escapes. No one saves her, which is good, you know. We have no damsel in distress here, which is good. And I was like, need to find her. I was like, uh, she just kicked her way out of this mud pit where she was, and uh, she escapes. And that's the story, folks. And the heroes survived another night. And then we see scenes of Judd smoking a cigarette like a hero and drinking a beer like his old man on the Porsche because this... It's Pet Cemetery Bloodlines, where the heroes drink and smoke and contain evil by shooting them in the eye. And don't forget, that shit on fire. That's right. And that's how the movie ended. Not much else to say. I did like that. Oh, wow. And uh, I'm sorry. I, the, the few things that I liked 
ugh, rating. I don't even want to say. Two out of ten. That's it. Two out of ten. Uh, the story is just lame. And uh, I feel like I wasted an hour and 27 minutes of my life. But hey, maybe you'll like this kind of stuff. Maybe if you like, you know, like, and by the way, the, the special effects and the gore, pretty shitty too. They, they, they look like, nine, like super low budget stuff. And maybe it was a super low budget thing considering it's on a, on a streaming service. But, you know, I've seen like legitimately low budget films that are far more creative than this stuff. So that's it. Two out of 10, Pet Cemetery Bloodlines, Paramount Plus. That's Rick's rated R horror movie review. And we're going to live off on this, baby. Rick's Rated R Horror Movie Review. Thank you for joining us. We're going to ride off into the sunset ourselves. Because that's the way they did it in the 1600s. And that's the way they did it in Pet Cemetery Bloodline. Until next time on Rick's Rated R Horror Movie Review Show.